So how could your adversity be your advantage? Or better yet, how could you turn your adversity or your company's adversity into your advantage? That's what we're talking about today. A little over a decade ago, I found myself suddenly homeless in LA. I mean, when I went to work that morning, I had a place to live, and when I returned, I did not. I had to get out of the place I was renting with no notice. I had a boatload of debt, nothing in the bank, nothing in savings, folks. I mean, I had nothing. What would you do if you find yourself suddenly homeless? I did what I think anyone in my position would have done, panicked, <laughs> Woo! sat in my car and sobbed. And then I heard my grandmother Lilia's voice in my head. It said, Más se perdió en la guerra. More was lost in the war. It's a phrase I often heard growing up whenever I was lamenting over some thwarted goal or minor loss. The war she was talking about was the 1959 Cuban Revolution that installed a communist dictator and forced my family to flee their beloved homeland, leaving everything they knew and loved behind. Más se perdió en la guerra always seemed to put your problems into perspective as a teenager, right? My grandmother arrived in America with nothing but her babies in hand, not even a formal education. But the woman had a vision and a fierce work ethic that led her to eventually establishing several successful businesses and owning her dream home. I learned so much from her about overcoming adversity and about the power of a vision. And those lessons combined with many years of my own leadership experiences helped me to establish a formula, develop a formula for turning your roadblocks to your goals into runways to success. I call it volar. Anybody know what that means? Volar is a Spanish word for flying, to soar. It's also an acronym. All the elements needed in order for you to achieve a great goal despite adversity. The V is for vision. You have to clarify your vision. This is where it all starts. You can't erect a building without specific drawings, right? But often a client will come to me with what they think is a clear vision when actually it's a little too broad or too general or not specific enough or not compelling enough. Your vision has to excite and inspire you. This is so important, especially if you're trying to motivate a team. How do you get diverse groups with diverse needs to buy into a group vision? You need to understand what about that vision motivates each individual and speak to that. Lead with the vision. The O envelot is for opportunity. When it comes to your door, you should raise your hand and say, si, por favor. That means yes, please. Raise your hand if you've ever passed up and dreaded the fact that you passed up on a great opportunity. Raise your hand. Mm -hmm. That mm, happens to the best of us. Why do we do that? Opportunities are all around us. Why do we shy away and sometimes run away from them? Well, perhaps we don't feel equipped enough educated enough, ready enough, right? Let me tell you, most successful people will tell you that they never felt ready enough. They just did it anyway. But how? The O and Volat is where you learn how to overcome your insecurities and fears so that you can reach, so that you can raise your hand and say, si, sí, por favor. Mm -hmm. there, here's the thing. Failure is not the worst case scenario. The what if is. Now, the L in Volad is for lean on your resources. Now, a lot of times, my clients will come with a very limited view of what a resource is, and so they think they don't have any. When I help them stretch their horizons and understand the abundance of resources they actually have and then how to leverage them effectively, ah, now we're cooking. Now we can go on to the A in Volad. Actualize a plan. Raise your hand if you think you're a pretty good planner. You're a pretty good planner? There's some pretty good planners in the room. The question is how well do you execute? Now raise your hand. Yeah, no, not so well. <laughs> raise your hand if you've ever started on a plan with much enthusiasm, only to veer off a little ways into it. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So this is where we learn the pitfalls in poor planning and how to avoid them. Do you make the plan too broad? Do you make it too long and convoluted? So complicated, nobody can even wrap their heads around it. I live by the KISS rule. Keep it stupid simple. Now, stupid simple doesn't mean easy necessarily. You have to be very strategic. But the simpler the plan, the more likely it is to be executed. Now, sometimes you have a solid plan, folks, but life gets in the way, right? The R in volat is for recalibrate when necessary because sometimes shift happens. Raise your hand if you've done a little shifting lately. <laughs> Most of us have, right? Sometimes you have to shift mid-plan and that's okay. Sometimes you have to throw the plan out and start from scratch and that's okay. And then sometimes the whole vision changes. So there I was, suddenly homeless in LA. I had gone to LA with a very strong vision to become a rock star. That's right. By day, I was working as a lead trainer and supervisor in a national restaurant group. By night, spending all of my resources on pursuing a music career. And I had some success. I played all my dreamed venues on the Sunset Strip. I had a CD on iTunes, even one of my songs on a hit TV show, Ugly Betty. Yeah. But it was dawning on me, thank you. <laughs> it was dawning on me that although I will always love music, I did not love the music business. And just as that was setting in, I found myself suddenly homeless. Time to recalibrate. So the vision was now clear. A fulfilling career where my talents would be well compensated. The opportunity was clear too, it had been there for a while. My general manager kept pushing me to go into the company's prestigious manager training program, an opportunity that offered an immediate salary of an executive. The next step was gonna be the tricky part. I still needed a place to live, right? Which meant I needed to lean on my resource. And that can be hard sometimes, asking for help, right? I get the question, how do you make a big ask? To which I respond, make your ask very clear, Lay out your specific terms and then follow through. My resource came in the form of a very big hearted friend who not only gave me her financial support by giving me the exact cash I needed to get that apartment, but her emotional support when she said, I'm not worried about you paying me back. I know you're going to be a great manager. So it was time to follow through, actualize my plan. And the plan was simple, secure an apartment, finish my manager training in record time and pay my friend back. And that's exactly what I did. And more importantly, I was assigned to one of the busiest restaurants in Beverly Hills that also happened to be a manager training store. So essentially, I was running a restaurant, a lounge, two bars, and training and mentoring future managers who, some of which had no or little restaurant experience. And that's the part of my job I loved. I discovered I had a knack and a passion for developing leaders. When they'd graduate and call me, Mama Mitch, I did what you said and I'm getting promoted. Love that. That sparked a greater vision that I'm living out today as an executive coach and speaker. One of my biggest adversities ended up being one of my biggest advantages. Today, like my grandmother, Lilia, I own my own thriving business and my dream home. Your adversity is your advantage. You can turn your roadblocks into runways to success. And I am here to help you. Volar. Thank you.